there are some jihad group in Africa that um, are excited about this takeover. And um, now, in this instance, I know you mentioned a, a little in the beginning, who bears the bronze in this takeover that has taken the world by surprise and seeing that other jihadist group in Africa precisely are celebrating the takeover. Yeah, they have, they have something in common. Uh, they are all they are all fighting a gorilla gorilla welfare. They are, uh, they will celebrate one of their own. The other uh, uh, extremist groups, terrorist groups around the country, they are going to be like a father to them. You know, illegitimate pursuit, extreme violent pursuit for for power. You know, is going to be legitimized in in in, in Afghanistan. So it gives them hope that if they continue to do the same things, the the Taliban, they will also arrive at the same point. You know, but any form of extremism, like in Africa, in Afghanistan, you might actually look at the ratio of, of, uh, of a faith-based ratio. It is possible that you have majority Muslims, but in Africa, it's not possible. You don't have majority Muslims in, a, in, the, in the largest uh, country in Africa, like Nigeria. So you cannot push for an extreme Islamic state. The lessons to be learned here is they need to carry the citizenry along if they have to fight such, you know, negative vices. They need to fight it alongside, you know, the guns and the bullets. They need to also fight it, you know, psychologically. Insurgency lasted so long in the northeast of Nigeria because... The people did not rise. How many are the insurgents in the Northeast? The Northeast can boast of uh, maybe 20% of the population of Nigeria. You know, so we're talking about over 10, 15 million people. How many are the, the, the insurgents? So there must be willingness on the part of the citizens to resist this extremism. <laughs>